Have you been told that Gautama the Buddha was a great social reformer? Did they tell you that he stood against the oppressive caste system? Were you also taught that Buddhism was an egalitarian movement that rose against the tyranny of the Brahmins? Yes? Well, I have some news for you. What you have been told about the Buddha is patently untrue. A popular meme of 20th century caste politics in India is the image of Gautama the Buddha as a kind of social reformer. Bhim Rao Ambedkar, who was instrumental in popularizing this rather misinformed narrative, once said, the rise of Buddhism in India was as significant as the French Revolution. However, a study of the Buddhist source texts reveals that Buddhism was an elitist enterprise created for the pursuit of spiritual enlightenment, and it was not concerned in the least with any kind of social change. Buddhism has for long been painted in contrast with Hinduism as if it were something radically different and new. In order to achieve this contrast, a lot of commonly understood words have been given a new meaning. For example, Ambedkarites often claim that the term Arya, which figures in Buddhist terminology like Shatvari Arya Satyani, the Four Noble Truths, and Arya Ashtangika Marga, had a psychological ethical meaning, noble. And it is not related to a specific culture or class. In reality, in those days, Arya practically meant Vedic, in the sense of being civilized with reference to observing Vedic norms and customs. Therefore, the Buddha conceived of his ideas as restored Vedic, rather than anti-Vedic somewhat like the Arya Samaj in the 19th century claimed to reform Hinduism by going back to the Vedas. Far from inventing a new path, the Buddha frequently appealed to the ancient way. When a minister of Magadha asked him the secret of the strength of the Republican states, his recipe turned out to consist of sticking to ancient laws and tradition, maintaining sacred sites, honoring ancient rituals, so contrary to the radical views of those who have turned him into an icon of their brand of politics, the Buddha's view of the good society was close to Confucian or Brahminical conservatism. Then what about caste? Well, let's have a look at what the Buddhist text Mahavidhasha says. What the noble ones say is the truth. What the others say is not true. They are called noble truths because they are possessed by those who own the wealth and assets of the noble ones, because they are possessed by those who are conceived in the womb of a noble person. Another text, the Lalita Vistara, says, after all, bodhisattvas were not born in a despised lineage among pariahs in families of card makers or mixed castes. This is in harmony with the Buddha's great sermon in which he says, the bodhisattvas appear only in two kinds of lineage, that of the Brahmins and that of the Kshatriyas. So, not surprisingly, about 80% of the men recruited in the Sangha during his lifetime were upper caste, more than 40% were Brahmins. The Buddha himself was a Kshatriya, son of the head of the Shakya tribe, and his patrons who built his monasteries included the Kshatriyas of the Nether Ganga region. The Buddha prophesied that his successor would be born in a Brahmin family. Upon his death, his ashes were claimed by his followers purely on the logic of caste. He was a Kshatriya, we are Kshatriyas, so we are entitled to his ashes. Clearly, his followers, after learning Buddhism from the Buddha himself for 45 years, were not in the least hesitant to display their caste. Hang on, this gets even more interesting. Manu is a vilified figure in Ambedkarite circles, but Buddhist scriptures celebrate the Buddha's birth in the solar lineage as a relative of Rama and as a direct descendant of Manu. In the Buddhist retelling of the Ramayana, the Buddha also claims to be a reincarnation of Rama and likens himself to Lord Vishnu. So the later portrayal of the Buddha as an avatar of Vishnu was a reciprocation 
of the sentiments first expressed by the great sage himself. Ambedkar declared, my social philosophy may be said to be enshrined in the three words, liberty, equality, and fraternity. I have derived them from the teachings of my master, the Buddha. If Ambedkar had studied Buddhist texts more thoroughly, he would have discovered that his master had little to do with these modern ideals. Gautama had refused, for example, to recruit women monks for years, citing that nuns would shorten the lifespan of the Sangha. But after years of persuasion, he finally gave in on condition that even the most seasoned nun would be subordinate to the most junior monk. Nothing in Buddhist history justifies the mythical image of Buddhism as a movement for social reform. It endorsed the prevalent social mores of every new land it spread to, whether Chinese imperial bureaucracy, Japanese military feudalism, or indeed the Hindu Varnajati system. As far as Buddha's personal life is concerned, he remained till his last moment on earth what would later be called a Hindu. Indeed, the Buddha was every inch a Hindu. This is Kunrat Elst, Oriental philologist and historian, for Upward. I urge you all to join the war against intellectual imperialism by supporting Upward. Please donate generously. <laughs>